Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to introduce you to the chaos game. We're going to start by creating a triangle and I'm going to do that by first creating an array called vertices. Then inside the vertices array, I'm going to create vector object and vector is a class within P5JS where an object can hold two to three values, but we're going to use it to hold just two values, the X and Y coordinate of each of the vertex points. And so we're going to populate the vertices array with vector objects, three to be exact. And I'm going to use a method within this class to create a vector object. And we need to provide the X and Y value we want to hold. And so I want it to be at width divided by two, comma zero. And then the other two, I want it at zero comma height and width comma height. Now, we're going to use a for loop to go through this vertices array. Then I'm gonna use a vertex function, which draws out the points, right? And so the two coordinates that we need to provide would be vertices of i dot x and vertices of I dot y. If I click run now, you don't see anything right now. And that is because with the vertex functions, you need to also provide two additional functions, begin shape and end shape. And it does exactly what the name suggests, which begins the shape and end the shape based on the vertex points that we provide, which are these points, right? So let's click run. And I want it to complete this shape, so I can just put in close for end shape, and I also want it to not fill in the color. All right, so now we have a triangle. Next, what we're gonna do is that we're going to create a variable called point, and point is going to be a random point on this canvas. And I'm going to create another vector object, and I'm going to give it a random value between width and height. Now, inside draw, let's draw this point out. So just do, how about we draw an ellipse? And then this ellipse will be at the position point of x, point of y. Let's give it a size of 3. And then how about I fill it with a black color? OK, so now we have a random point. And now comes the chaos game. So what we're going to do is that we're going to continue to draw the points on this canvas. But this point is going to be at a location that is halfway between the current position of the point and one of the three vertices here. It can be any of these. So pt.x will be between pt.x and so let's create that point. So the vertex point will be a random point between each of these three. So I can just do random and I can just provide the name of the arrays, which is vertices. And this will output a random point between the three points that we have. Now, we want the new position of the point to be at halfway between that point and one of the points here. So all we need to do is pt.x plus vt.x divided by 2. Then pt.y will be the same thing, which is pt.y plus vt.y divided by 2. Then let's click Run. All right, so if you notice, all these points are randomly placed inside this triangle. But actually, this is where the chaos game comes in. If I just actually, let me put this background inside here. And what do you slowly see now? It's the Sierpinski triangle, right? Which is quite amazing because it emerges from these chaos, these random points that are being placed halfway between the vertex point and the random initial point that we 
placed. So just to try again, a new random point, if I click run, we still get the Serpinski triangle again. So actually, to make it a little bit faster, I'm going to use a for loop. Let's do 100. So each time when the draw loop is called, we're going to already draw 100 points. So this will help it render a little bit faster. And instead of doing an ellipse at this size here, why don't we just draw a point? And I can just use the function point. Let's try this. And I just found this to be really neat. You get this Serpinski triangle that emerges from a very chaos way of introducing this point, right? Because we just pick a random point on this canvas. And now with this basic rule, you can create this amazing shape. Now, I also want to show you that this happens on any type of triangle. So how about we, instead of providing the vertices points here, we can actually use a function called mouse pressed. And we're going to create the vertex points based on where we click our mouse. So we're going to put in the name of our array, and then we're going to push a point in based on where we click the mouse. So we're going to create a, a vector object based on the X location of our mouse, which is mouse X, and the Y location of our mouse, which is mouse Y. If I click run now, we get an error, and that is because we have not clicked anything yet, but we already call it to create this triangle shape. So what we need to do is that, how about we create a variable called count, and let's start it at zero, and then create another variable called max, and then set it at three, because we want three points. Then we will say that if count max is still less than, no, count is less than count max, right? Then we'll push a point into the vertices array. And then we want to increment count every time that we click the mouse. Now, inside here, we only want to call all of these code only if count max is already at three, right? So this way, it will allow us to click all the points to populate the array before we start drawing the triangle. Cannot read x29. Oh, if count is equals to three, right? Because count max is always at three. All right, let's just try one, two, and three. Ta-da! Let's try again. So as you can see here, it can be any type of triangle and you get this shape. How amazing is that? And if you come to the Wikipedia page, you can see that there are other types of polygons that you can actually play around with. But this values here is the values that you want to place a point in between the two points, right? So for the triangle, we place a point at halfway between the two points, the random point and the vertex. But for the pentagon, you need to place it at 0 0.618 between the vertex and the random point. So why don't we try the pentagon? Instead of just dividing this by two, I'm going to use a lerp function that takes in three arguments. The first two points that you want to interpolate in between, and then the last argument is the distance that you want to interpolate by. So lerp between these two points, and for the triangle, it is at 0 0.5, right? Same thing for the Y side. And it should still work. One, two, three. Ta -da. Okay, now 
let's change from count max equals to three to five, right? And then for this, we need 0 0.618 for a pentagon shape, right? So one, two, three, oh, what do we need to change? Oh, this has to be count max. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Ta-da! But it seems like if it's not a pentagon with equal sides, the shape that you see here kind of overlap with each other. So why don't we make a pentagon with equal sides? So what we can do is, how about I comment out this mouse press function, and then we're going to not use these parts anymore. All right, and then inside setup, we're going to use a for loop to populate the vertices array. And then i equals to zero to i less than count max because that will be the number of vertex points that we need, right? And how about we set angle to 360 divided by count max and then multiply it by i. So what this equation does is that first 360 divided by count max, you get the angle that is divided evenly between the number of sides that you want, right? And then you multiply it by i so that it's spaced out based on where that side is. And because we're using degree, we also need to change the angle mode to degrees. And now that we get angle, right, we need to convert from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates to get the x and y coordinate that we want to place all of these vertex points. And so we're going to use the equation x equals to r times cosine of angle and y equals to r times sine of angle. And we need to also set R and R, if we want it to be as big as possible, I'm going to set it at the size of width divided by two. Then now we're just going to populate this vertices array with vector object at X and Y location. I think that should be it. Let's try it. Okay. And so we also want to move it out by width divided by two and height divided by two. And so what we can do is we just need to add it to our X and Y coordinates here. Basically we're moving the origin. All right. You can play around with the angle so that the shape is at the orientation that you want. And now that we have a pentagon with all of these little pentagons shape, why don't we play with a different polygon? So as you can see here, there are so many of them. So why don't we put all of these inside an array? So all we need to do is that we just need to give it an index value so we can play around with the shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a count max array and also how about we call it lerp value and then in here count max will be three five six seven eight nine and ten and then for a lerp value it will be for three it was 0 0.5 right for five it was 0 0.618 all right okay and then all we have to do now is for count max here of index. How about we just put an index for here? Um, then down here. Is that it for count max? Oh, and then the lerp values, right? So this will be lerp value of index all right and then hmm, I think this might not be the best way to do it but we want six which is the index of two
you get the idea. This is not the best way to implement it. So you can rearrange it such that it is more intuitive. So we get hexagon now, and then this one will be septagon. Heptagon, not septagon. And then for index of four, For index of five, non nagon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then let's finish it with decagon. So these are the most basic rules where you find a distance between a random point and the vertex points, right? But if you go back to the Wikipedia page, you can actually set other types of rules such as, so for example, this one, a point inside a pentagon repeatedly jumps half of the distance towards a randomly chosen vertex, but the currently chosen vertex cannot neighbor the previously chosen vertex if the two previously chosen vertices are the same. So it create more restrictions to the rule instead of just picking a random vertex points, right? This is a very fun, but actually not so intuitive way to create fractal shapes based on one random point and a set of instructions. So give it a try.